All right, uh, so let's go over some general information about athletics. Uh, Ed, can you go to the next slide, please? Awesome, so here is what to expect from this presentation. Uh, this will be around a 30 minute presentation, uh, depending on uh, how long Ed wants to go for. Uh, and then at the end, we'll go, for, go into some question and answers uh, for anyone who wants uh, to ask any questions to Ed uh, or me, your admission counselor. Um, and so definitely feel free to use that chat box in the bar at the bottom to ask any questions throughout the webinar uh, so that we can get to them either during or at the end. Um, and Ed, I'll just hand the mic off to you. Well, thank you, thank you again, um, everybody, for those that are just kind of popping in here at the very end. Feel free to ask questions, all right? That's why we're here. Uh, we're here for you. We're here for your parents. We're here to make sure that you get a complete overview. So. Um, I'm gonna hop right in and uh, again, let's make this as interactive as possible, okay? Um, you know, we here at, at Illinois Tech, I think have a very distinct mission, which is to make sure that athletics understands its priority structure, okay? Um, I think the school has an unbelievable tradition on the academic and professional development side, okay? The city of Chicago, where we're located, um, what the school provides for you as far as transportation on the on the CTA for free, the, the trains, the buses, all that stuff, it, it, it makes your experience limitless uh, in a lot of ways, you know. So we have um, a commitment to academic, to academic excellence and, uh, and a dynamic student experience, okay. Um, how I generally summarize our mission is, is Illinois Tech is a place where you can have a complete experience, right. We try to say yes before we say no, right. Um, you know, we hold practices at times to make sure that you're not missing uh, professional clubs and clinics. We're making sure that you have time for uh, off-campus uh, networking, internships, jobs, those type of things that can help your career as well as taking advantage of professor office hours and clubs that, that will help you do those types of things um, professionally. So um, we want to make sure that, that as a department, making sure that that division three experience that that illinois tech unique specific experience is always being um, fostered and is available okay um just some cool little timeline things here um currently uh athletics is housed in uh, the keating sports complex that was built in 1966 we've updated it a few times since then um, we'll go through some pictures of what that looks like later um, the Telestrator uh, used today in every sports broadcast that you'll ever see uh, was invented in 71. Um, and that was our guy right there. Uh, Leonard Rifle was, was our guy, okay. Um, 14, our student fan section, Scarlet Fever was created. 15, um, the baseball team, which was right before I got here was seated number one in the USCAA Small College World Series. So we have many sports, not just baseball, with uh, traditions of success. Um, and then in 18, uh, we officially gained NCAA Division III status as after transitioning out of the NAIA for years. And then our first NCAA team um, to go to a national tournament was men's tennis in 19. Um, we have had some success in a lot of sports, and I'll speak for, for mine right now. Um, baseball is having a pretty good run at the moment. We've been top 10. And batting average most of the year um, and we just beat the number eight team in the country you know so for us and, and for our department I think we're doing a heck of a job we, we've hired phenomenal coaches we have phenomenal administrators um, and, and we're really excited uh, about what's going on and, and what we're doing here you go um, do we have your sport athletic teams okay uh, we got a little bit of everything all right basketball cross lacrosse Soccer, swimming, tennis, track and field, volleyball, and then on the men's side, we add we add baseball to that mix. Okay, um, so if you're interested in any one of those, um, you know we'll talk about how to get recruited and those type of things moving forward. But um, it's as it's as simple as making sure that we uh, contact the coach and, and have a conversation, and create a relationship, and, and kind of get that done. Okay, um, a lot of our sports like cross country and swimming and you know, track and field, those are, are basically non-cut sports, right? So we just want you to get in touch with the coach. Um, 
one way or another, you know, submit your times or submit uh, those types of things and, and we'll get you, we'll get you rocking and rolling and, and outfitted and, and ready to go. Um, you know, athletically, we have about 250 or more uh, student athletes, 17 teams, 11 coaches. You know, I think if you registered for this, you have a pretty good feel for, for what we do uh, academically, but a lot of engineering on our teams, a lot of architecture, a lot of business. Um, on the women's side, we see um, a lot of psychology, um, and then we're seeing a lot of pre-med, pre-law, um, those types of things uh, as well coming in, okay? Um, one of the big questions we get when it comes to, to the academics since the majors and those type of things is, you know, chemical engineering is really hard. Aerospace is really hard. Civil is really hard. Architecture is a lot of time. You know, even our business department, you know, it's not a, it's not a cakewalk, right? So, you know, how do we have, um, how can you do both? How can you play an intercollegiate sport and how can you get a high quality education? And my easiest answer to that is, you know, after being here six years, I, I watch water find its own level all the time. You know, our guys study together. They work out together. You know, they don't do their, their internships and those type of things together. But, um, but you understand the commitment that our kids make, you know, in all of our sports and what has to take place in order to have success on the field, in the pool, um, on the court, um, and to be a high level student. Our kids come in committed to that academic side, right? So um, as coaches and as a department, we make, we make those schedules work kind of like I talked about earlier, but you know, your, your major will not be unique in that, you know, if you're in aerospace, there's someone on your team that's probably also aerospace. If you're mechanical, there's probably someone that's, that's mechanical and you guys are going through that similar experience. And, and that experience, even if you're engineering to an architect, while the experience itself is different, the commitment and the intensity is, is not unique, right? So you guys are there to support each other and the, the department and the coaching staff is there to support you. And, um, and the institution does a really good job on that end as well. So just to kind of give you some, some quick little insights there. Okay. Um, again, we are division three. Okay. So what does that mean compared to one, two, all those things? We are um, a non-athletic scholarship based institution. Um, we play a set number of games, you know, so again, it's easiest for me to speak in terms of baseball. Well, division one baseball plays 56 games. Division three plays 40. Okay. Um, division one will give you an athletically based scholarship. We will not. Okay. Um, we can get into financial aid, some of those things in, in the question and answer, but, you know, financial aid at division three level comes through the academic side and it comes through the FAFSA and financial aid. Um, but nothing will be because, you know, you're a fast runner or a really good swimmer, or you can dive and, you know, you can throw baseball real good. Uh, those things do not happen at a division three institution. Okay. Um, and a lot of those things are there to minimize the conflict between the academic and your professional development and, and sport. Um, that doesn't mean we're not competitive. That doesn't mean we don't get after it. That doesn't mean that, that kids at our level can't go on and play at the next level. Uh, but what it does mean is that, um, you know, you're going to have a balance between both things. I apologize for this very, very quickly, but hey, you guys have got to leave. Okay, daddy's on a call. Daddy's giving a presentation. You guys got to go. Okay, Lily, go. Close the door, please. Thank you. To all listening, I apologize. My daughters wanted to say hi. Um, academics, what standards uh, do we hold here? All right, the conference standard is a 2.0 uh, with 24 credits uh, in your last two semesters making progress toward graduation, okay? Um, that is the bare minimum. I will tell you um, over half of our, um, our GPAs team-wise last semester uh, were above a 3.25, okay? Um, and two teams hovered right at 3.5. Um, so I think that at a high-end engineering and architecture school, that's pretty good, okay? Um, we don't have a lot of issues with academic eligibility, okay? Again, water finds its own level. And we work really hard to support uh, the academic side, okay, both institutionally and departmentally. Okay, and each individual coach, you know, we're in constant contact with your grades, how you doing, what help do you need, 
and finding ways to support you through those needs. Um, some things that we kind of touched on real quick, but um, one of those sources here on campus for, for academic support um, is our Academic Resource Center. Their peer tutoring is available, obviously exam reviews, um, guided by, by tutors, workshops and seminars, and those things will go from anything to time management, how to adjust to college, to as you get a little bit older, you know, um, applying for jobs and, uh, you know, how to, to professionally network and, and those type of things. Um, through the Academic Resource Center, you have options with group study and, you know, if you need uh, electronic support, right? If you, your computer goes down, they'll have an extra, a special program or special device, they'll be able to, to help you out at least uh, temporarily, okay? Um, obviously, this past year, we've done a lot of these things virtually. We've done a lot of these things um, not in the actual physical space of the ARC, um, but the people in there are phenomenal. They've been a great help, not only for, for my baseball guys, but for our student athletes and for our students in general, okay? Um, so, so we're really, really happy to, to deal with, with them on, on a regular basis. Um, a day in the life of an athlete here at Illinois Tech, you know, it's going to vary from team to team, and it's going to vary from situation to situation, okay? Um, but typically, many of our teams work out in the morning, okay? So we get you up, we get you showered, we get you moving, we get you, um, we get you working out, and then you're, you have the rest of your day. So much of our athletic activity um, is done before 8, 8.30, okay? Classes uh, this past year have moved from 8.35 starts to 8 o'clock starts or 8.05 starts um, because of the social distancing and, the, and those type of things. Um, but we've worked out in the morning, Okay, a lot of our teams after that will go to breakfast together. Um, you know, we'll have classes during the day and then, you know, certain sports will work out again. Okay, uh, swimming is a great example of, you know, at times we've, we, they've been on a schedule of two times a day in the pool, right? Um, baseball, you may have weights in the morning and then we may have, um, you know, an afternoon or an evening actual baseball physical activity during certain times of the year. It's not a 365, seven days a week type of deal, but, um, you know, you'll, you'll have some of that, okay? In the middle of the day to the end of the day, you'll have your clubs, your meetings, um, your study groups and, and those type of things. And then we encourage you to sleep and sleep a lot. Um, you know, so, you know, oftentimes we see during certain times of the year too, where our kids aren't sleeping or they're sleeping less because they're studying. I got projects and group stuff too and, and all the rest of it. But we will try to make sure that you guys maintain a healthy balance and that we're checking in with you to make sure that you're eating and sleeping properly, okay? Um, you will see here, uh, athletic travel. I think all of our teams do a phenomenal job of, of traveling well, okay? We've got Windy City Limousine, um, you know, that services many of our teams. What I like about them is their buses are awesome, as you can kind of see there, but everything is outfitted with um, wireless internet, right? So uh, we could be traveling to Rockford, we could be traveling to Wisconsin, we could be traveling to Indianapolis from where we are, or Florida, right? Um, and our kids are going to have to study, they're going to have to do homework, they're going to have to turn in papers, they're going to have to use their academic software in some way, shape, or form. So um, one of the things that, that we make sure that we do in that travel process, one of the things that we make sure that we do uh, in that academic support process is making sure that you always have access to your education, okay? And I think um, the choice in our, in our transportation reflects that. Uh, where will we go? We'll, we'll basically go anywhere in the country. So it'll, it'll, it'll move, all right? Our, um, our conference is known as the Northern Athletics Conference or Collegiate Conference. Um, and we are based in Chicago. We'll hit up the Western suburbs of Chicago, which is greater Chicago land. Uh, we'll get into greater Milwaukee. Um, and then Rockford and, and Madison, Wisconsin are kind of on that, that Western line of our league. Okay. And then starting next year, starting in the fall, St. Norbert's College in Green Bay, Wisconsin will be a part of the league. Um, so those of you that are playing those team sports and, and those type of things, you'll get a chance to, to kind of go to the home of, uh, you know, the, where the Green Bay Packers do their, you know, their fall camp and, and those type of things at, at St. Norbert's. Okay. Um, team trips have varied. Um, you know, last year, baseball was supposed to go to 
to California. We're going to be in the Pasadena area uh, for a week. We've traveled to Florida. We've traveled to Arizona. Eventually, we will travel to the Northwest and to the Virginia area and to Texas. So those are trips that we have planned coming up. Uh, Swim and Dive has generally uh, found a Florida trip on spring break. Uh, the last several years, women's volleyball uh, went to the Pacific Northwest and played in Oregon a couple of years ago. Um, you know, women's basketball two years ago went to Puerto Rico. Men's soccer took a trip uh, to Ireland. Okay, so um, it's not just going to be a, a local Midwest experience. At some point, most of our teams will will get you out of here and we'll get you some uh, some different experiences and see different parts of the country. And and we really think that's important. Okay, to have a, a well-rounded uh, experience. Um, so here are some pictures like I talked about earlier that we'll see inside of Keating Sports Center. So this is um, our fitness center or where we work out. If you take note of that middle picture there, we've actually moved much of the selectorized equipment out um, and we have put it uh, in a separate area. So we have more room uh, in there now for the free weights like you see on that picture to, to the immediate left. Um, we're doing a lot more movement based activity with the with the free weights and, and with the heavier weight. So from an athletic development standpoint, the room is much more functional. Um, and then, you know, from a, from a health wellness fitness general student perspective, we've been able to, to shift that to a different part of our building, um, which is not pictured in this presentation. All right, and then you're looking at uh, a picture of our, our competition floor there all the way to the right. Um, swim and dive, there's your, your home, home pool right there, Echo Pool, really kind of an awesome spot. Um, you know, most of the time for swim meets, we get a bunch of people in there and it's loud. Um, so hopefully that comes back post COVID, um, but it's a really cool spot. Um, our tennis team uses Excess Tennis, which is just up the road. Um, brand new facility within the last three years. Um, Coach, uh, Coach Scanlon does just a phenomenal job over there. And then for our cross country and, and track teams, uh, you get the city of Chicago. You know, that's your facility, the whole thing. So you got the Chicago Lakefront Trail there. Uh, and then Dunbar Park is, is right behind uh, campus here. Okay. Uh, you're seeing the baseball field there. Uh, we just upgraded uh, the infield in a large way. We've been able to add. Uh, stuff on the outfield fence and, and those type of things. The dugouts will get upgraded uh, here at the beginning of June. Um, and we're looking to, to put in a pitching and, and velocity center uh, into our bullpen here by next fall as well. So uh, pretty excited about what we've done there. And then you see Stewart Field, home of our soccer and lacrosse teams. Um, and again, just a phenomenal facility. You see it staring right into the skyline there. It's one of my favorite spots on campus. I love watching games there at night um, and seeing just the city lit up and, and us kind of in, enjoying it. Um, here are administrators um, on campus, okay? Um, we have two interim directors of athletics in Coach Colwell and um, Yusha Gilmore. Um, Chapin is a phenomenal athletic trainer um, you see our FAR is there, and then uh, Diana is pictured too as our liaison to admissions. And again, she is phenomenal and can answer any and all questions uh, related to, to our process. Okay, here are our coaches in these next couple of slides here. Uh, and again, I can't speak highly enough about this group of people that I get to work with every day. All right, I hope I'm better looking than that picture right there, but I may not be. All right, but there's contact information um, for every coach there. And what I'll do is I'll go back just in case you are kind of curious as to who your contact would be. So I'll leave this up here for, for about a minute. You have email addresses right there. Our email or our website is also Illinois Tech Athletics. Uh, Illinois is completely spelled out. So IllinoisTechAthletics.com uh, where you can find all this information plus contact phone numbers as well. Okay. And each one of us should have our office phone forwarded to our cell phone as well. So you should be able to get a hold of us pretty easily. Uh, if you have a high level of interest, we can take that call and get you going. Again, here's a second set of coaches. And I'll leave that up here for 
for a moment. Here's our athletic training staff again. Uh, in the top right there, you'll see Dr. Ganad. Uh, also, uh, picture Dr. Ganad as our team doctor. She's with the Rush Medical System. Uh, so anytime we need family practitioners or uh, orthopedic consults or sports consults or whatever it happens to be, we're, we're generally working through the Rush system, which is one of the top systems in the country, okay? The orthopedic uh, surgeon group that, that we would use through here is the same ones that the Bulls uh, and the White Sox use, okay? They're all through, through Rush orthopedics and, and those type of things. So, um, you know, for those asking, you know, if something were to happen, am I going to have the best care available to me? And the answer is, is absolutely you will. Okay. Uh, how am I recruited? Um, really, recruitment is about contact, right? It's about developing relationships. So you have the ability to contact us, like I have mentioned countless times uh, at this point. So there's our website there. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you can fill out a recruit me form on each individual sports page. So if you're a women's volleyball player, go to their page. It'll say recruit me. Go ahead, fill that out. Your coach will get um, a direct email, you know, saying, hey, you know, so-and-so filled out the form, you know, and, and, and we'll make sure to, to get back with you on that. If for whatever reason that doesn't work, feel free to call. If that doesn't work, feel free to, you know, send video and, and have, you know, your, your high school coach, your club coach, your counselor reach out to coaches. You know, at the end of the day, uh, I'll speak for myself, but at the end of the day, I think most of us feel um, that we want kids that want to be here, that we want kids that are excited about Illinois Tech and, and not just excited about baseball or volleyball or basketball or, or track or swimming or, or whatever it is. We, we want kids that are excited about going to school here, right? Going to school here is not going to change because you're an athlete. Going to school here is not going to change, um, you know, because you're good at sport, right? School here is going to be hard and there's going to be an expectation and you're going to have to meet it just like you would expect there to be uh, in an athletic program, you know, so we are really excited about kids that are really excited about us, you know, so I, if you're excited, then I would convey that to the best of your ability, and, and it usually works out uh, for you here, okay, um, there's some more contact information, feel free to use Diana, um, if you can't get a hold of us, or, or one of our other coaches, and, um, you know, feel free to contact me, hey, I'm trying to get a hold of the, the tennis coach, can you help me out? Yes, easy for it at iit.edu, right? Um, and feel free to, to reach out to, to my office phone. Uh, I guarantee you'll get my cell, uh, and that's the way I want it, right? I wanna make sure that I'm available for you guys uh, through this process, okay? Um, and be sure that when you contact us and when you get on campus, you ask your questions and, and you make it hard on us, right? We wanna make sure that you have a full understanding of what you're getting into and and what it's like here and, and we want you to be excited one thing i tell our recruits all the time like when, when you call and tell me hey i'm coming to illinois tech i want you to be all in right um you know because for me you're coming into our family and you're coming not just to a baseball program or or into some some team that that's random you're coming into something that we believe in that we care about and all of our coaches i think feel that way about what we're doing right and if you want to be at illinois tech this is a great spot you know what i mean um and, and you'll make it work and we'll make it work and, and it'll be good you know, so, you know, outside of sport or outside of, of promoting our department and, and those type of things, wherever you choose to go to school, I hope you're excited about it because um, you're going to spend some time there. Right. And, and I would encourage you to to explore and do all the research and understand kind of what you're doing and where you're going, because transferring is not that much fun. Right. And it costs you extra money down the line. I promise you that, too. So um, so put the tough questions to us. Right. So, you know, that you're excited about coming and I guarantee you when, when you come, we'll be excited about it, you know, and we'll be here the, the whole way, right? From recruitment to graduation, right? You know, we, uh, we have a new tradition on our team. And we, we're finally old enough to kind of do it, but, you know, 97% uh, of our kids have a job or in grad school before they walk across the stage to graduation. So every time our kid signs a contract or accepts a job, we celebrate it and practice and, and get it out there pretty publicly. And, uh, you know, I think that's what Illinois Tech does. It makes sure that the next step of your life is going to be successful, whether you play sport, whether you're just a student, whether you're, you know, active in clubs and clinics and all those things that Illinois Tech and the city of Chicago really give you an opportunity to do something special with your life after the four years that you spend here, you know, so um, 
I hope wherever you go and you take advantage of it and you're that excited about it, like, like I am to go to work every day. So Diana, I think that might be a lot of my, my talk right there. What, what do you need me to, to expand on or what should we kind of do here? What's next? Yeah, yeah, that was an amazing presentation, Ed. I think you covered most of uh, the information uh, that our students are looking for. Um, I do have some questions in the chat if we just wanted to move into like question and answer. Absolutely, um, should I unshare my screen? Should I keep this contact up here? What would you like me to do? Yeah, sure, you can unshare your screen. Okay, just so you guys know, Diane is actually in charge. I'm not in charge. No. <laughs> All right, so let's go into the first question. So I see a question about COVID and if there are any changes uh, that have been made to athletic teams uh, during COVID this year. Uh, and also just a question on when will things uh, go back to normal? <laughs> Million dollar questions, when will it go right. back to normal? I have <laughs> no idea yesterday if it was up to me. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we obviously had to change, um, we obviously had to change the way we did business, right? Um, I'm a big family guy. The word family means a lot to me and that's kind of the core of what we do, right? So I will speak for me on this. I, I like having 35 guys in the weight room at one time, right? I like having full teams together as much as humanly possible all the time. Um, those things didn't happen this year, right? We were allowed to do things in group of 10 provided we had enough distance. Uh, the weight room was even smaller, um, you know, but what we were able to do was make it work, okay? Um, and the way the NCAA worked and the way our conference worked and the way our institution worked, you know, you know, we lost our season last year. So the school found a way to make sure that our spring sports who lost the season a year ago had had a season this year and, and our fall sports didn't, our winter sports didn't. Um, and that's not, that's not fun and that's not something I wanna promote, but those were some of the changes. It is the school's intention to be back to regular class and regular order in August. So we are hopeful, right, that we will be back to regular order in August. Um, but COVID is going to dictate that, right? Um, vaccines are going to dictate that. The medical professionals are going to dictate that um, and how those things go. So hopefully, A, we, a, we did a phenomenal job of dealing with COVID and not having these crazy spikes. Do we have our cases? Of course we did, right? Um, but we didn't have, we didn't have to shut down school. We didn't have to send anybody home. We didn't have to shut down an apartment for, for two, three weeks, um, like other places quite frankly did, you know? So I think the school and our, and our department and our staff, you know, Chapin, whose picture you saw in there was in charge of, of that part of it for us. We did a phenomenal job of managing it. Um, our guys right now, our spring sports are tested three times a week. You know, we've got two rapids and a PCR every week. Um, so we're doing a great job. So if something happens, we catch it early, we, we knock it out, we're not, we're not shut down. So hopefully we're back to normal in August. Um, and I say that because I don't wanna make promises I can't keep, but uh, that's the school's intention. I think Diana, you'll back me up on that. Um, and then if that's the school's intention, that's obviously the department's intention and uh, our athlete's intention and our coach's intention, but um, but as far as the when, I'm, I'm a follower, right? I, I have to do kind of what we're, we're instructed to do and, and that's kind of where we're at with that. Yeah, great definitely. Question. Definitely a great question. Um, and yeah, in regards to like official updates, um, just keep an eye out on our website uh, for any updates about like opening up fully or if we're just gonna do like kind of a hybrid motion that we did last year. Um, so like you can take online courses or you can take fully in-person courses depending on your comfortability level. All right, so next question we have is, how much does it cost to play a sport at IIT? Um, <laughs> I think each sport's a little bit different. Um, so, you know, there's not like a flat athletic fee that, that does everything. Right. Um, and, and it's going to cost a little bit at the division three level to make sure that we're in compliance and that you can keep some gear and some of those other things. So, um, so baseball, when you're a freshman, we ask you to pay a sub $300 fee. Um, and that outfits you for, for four years, winter jacket, backpack, team backpack, you know, your, your under uniform garments, those type of things. Um, and then you have to pay a small fee 
to go on the spring trip. So the spring trip is anywhere from five to nine days. It's a flight. It's, um, you know, eating out at restaurants, basically every meal, th those type of things. And, and I think I've never asked for more than 300 bucks for that trip. You know, so the first year you might pay 578 and then 300 after that. Um, but I think it's, it's pretty standard across the board at division three. Um, other teams may, may do some things differently in there, or there might be opportunities to buy extra team gear or things that say soccer on it, you know, that aren't required for you to have, but if you and your parents want something a little bit different, we make it available to you. Right. Um, so those type of things. So there's, I wish I could give you a very specific number, um, for each sport, but it kind of will vary, um, from sport to sport, but it's, it's very minimal and often optional. Awesome, thank you. Uh, next question we have is, um, is the fitness center available to everyone or just athletes? No, so the fitness center is available to everyone. One of the things about division three is that it cannot be athlete specific all the time, right? So our fitness center is open to, to everybody, but we do have athlete hours. And we do have times where teams and or athletic development staff can reserve the weight room uh, for athlete specific uh, activities. So um, as a baseball coach, I try to get our guys to take advantage of those hours or I kind of really firmly encourage our kids to take advantage of those hours um, because it fits in with the rest of their day, you know, um, but the regular student also has some fitness centers available to them in the dorms and some other spots on campus. So, um, you know, the, the, the weight room kind of the way I showed it to you is now really, really designed, um, for that athletic development. And then our, where we took that select that selectorized equipment and some of those other things that's kind of designed more for the general student at this point. Um, so there is some separation there, which has been from an athletic standpoint, kind of nice, but it's not, it's not 100% separate. Right, that's good to know. Um, and the next question we have is, um, can anyone try out for a team? So again, that's gonna be um, sport to sport based, right? Um, for soccer, they have open tryouts at the beginning of every year. Um, basketball is under uh, two new coaches actually this year. So I'm not 100% sure on their policies. Um, you know, we, for baseball, we kind of have an, a trial process 99.9% .9 of the time. I know who's coming in. I know what's going on. You know, so if you're, if you fall in under me, right, we'll have a conversation before you come in and, and we'll kind of lay out that process. So each sport's a little bit different. Um, but if you're cross country, if you're track, if you're swimming, um, that's generally a non-cut situation, right? Obviously the, the swim and dive coach doesn't want someone that doesn't know how to swim. Right, that's not a time to learn how to swim. Um, but at the same time, right, that that opportunity is going to be available to you to to take advantage of those types of sports. Right, the team sport or the on-field team sport is going to be different. Right, swimming is a team sport, tennis is a team sport, but it's it can also be very individualized. You know, so um, the opportunity is there to compete, and the opportunity is there to have the conversation about a co with the coach. Um, some of our sports may be a little bit more limited than others, though. All right. Um, I have a few more questions from the crowd. Yeah. Um, the question is, are there smaller organized clubs on campus, such as powerlifting? Do you happen to know that, Ed? So there are some of those things. Yeah, some of them go real peak high, like super interest, and the next year they're gone, you know, kind of depending on what's going on. But we do have a powerlifting club. Um, I think that uh, Courtney Priest, our uh, director of um, you know, fitness rec um, here on, on campus, does a phenomenal job of, of those types of things, along with, you know, the yoga and the Zumba and, you know, uh, Taekwondo and, and some of these other things that, that we do um, as a part of our student experience through, through the intramural side of things. So, um, there's a little bit of everything there for, for everybody, you know, badminton is huge on our campus, you know, so if you like playing badminton, we're, we're a good spot. Um, you know, so I think, again, I think there's, there's just about something for everybody here. Cool. 
Awesome. Thank you, Ed. Uh, and then I do have a few questions regarding summer sports. Um, are there any summer sport camps that are offered during like the summertime for students to participate in? At the moment, we do not have very many. I know I think I saw one pop up about basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, to my knowledge, we are not doing that. Baseball has not done one yet. Um, the soccers will have um, some prospect camp stuff going on. It's usually late summer. I want to say they usually run that in August, right before school starts up. Um, but those things will be on the individual sport web pages. Um, and feel free to email me directly or to email Diana and she can get that question over to us um, and we can, um, we can get you more specific information. But um, the two soccer programs are the ones that have really run those camps here. Um, you know, we as baseball are, are looking at starting probably not this summer because of COVID and the restrictions and it just doesn't seem to be um, prudent to start kind of promoting that now during our situation. But, um, but next summer we will probably have more programs kind of up and running doing, doing some summer stuff. Cool. Awesome. Uh, and then I have a question about transfer students. Um, can a transfer student join a team on their first semester? Um, or how likely it is, uh, is it for transfer students to uh, get into a team as soon as possible? Yeah, again, that has to do with, uh, with, with talking to the coach, right? Uh, we will take transfer students. I had a conversation with a transfer uh, student literally an hour ago, right? Someone that we would look to try to bring in and, and make a part of our team. So it really depends on getting in touch with the coach and making sure that you are academically eligible uh, to come in and compete, right? Um, are you in good academic standing? Have you been in disciplinary action at your previous school? Um, those are going to be the two top things coming in right away. Okay. Um, have you been in school and, and making progress toward a degree, right? Or are you taking, for lack of a better phrase at this moment, have you been taking all basket weaving? So you've been in college three years with zero credits, right? Um, you know, those type of things aren't going to help, aren't going to help you or, or help your eligibility, but um, it really goes into uh, speaking with the coach and making sure that you are academically in good standing. Those are the, those are the two biggest issues there. Cool. Awesome. And I see we have one more question. And if anyone in the group has any further questions, uh, definitely feel free to put it in the chat. Um, but the last question I see is that, um, is there any intramural groups? Uh, if so, how active are they? Um, we kind of addressed this already regarding like that powerlifting question. Um, yeah. so yes, we do have intramural groups available for our students, uh, really depending on the group. Um, I just learned that our badminton team is very active on our campus. Um, I wouldn't say it's a badminton team as much as there's a lot of people that play badminton over and over and over and over and over. And over. Oh. <laughs> tournaments that we'll put on here and, and those type of things. Cool, cool. Uh, yes, so we do have those options available for our students. Um, and yeah, hopefully you can be a part of them. All right. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And uh, does anyone else have any questions? Um, any questions for the I feel chat? like you guys are letting me off the hook easy here. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you do have any questions in the future um, that uh, maybe you just pop off, pop in your head after this webinar. Um, definitely feel free to contact us. I'm going to drop my email in the chat box once again. Uh, feel free to contact us if you have any questions, uh, either about like general admissions um, or anything about sports. Um, I did see a question actually. Uh, when is the season for women's lacrosse? Do you know that, Ed? So they're playing right now. So they are what we consider a spring season. So their practices will start, their official traditional season practices will start late January, mid to late January, and they will compete um, through April. Their non-traditional season is in the fall. So right when we get back to school. Um, so it'll run parallel to baseball, to spring track and field. Cool. Awesome. Uh, and then, yeah, if no one else has any questions, uh, we can go ahead and stop recording. Oh, we actually do have one more question. <laughs> when does men's soccer season start? So that is in the fall. So men's soccer will generally uh, move in before school starts. 
and compete through November. So they, they're considered a fall sport. So it would run parallel to uh, the other type of football, right? So, uh, and the women compete during the same season. So your fall is, um, is our cross country, our women's volleyball, uh, and our soccers are the, are the big sports there. Basketball, swim and diver in the winter. So they'll generally start their practicing in October and compete through February, early March. All of our sports will train. Uh, I sorry, I just saw that one pop up. So all of our sports are generally we have some type of training year round. Okay, so soccer obviously comes in before school. They run through just before Thanksgiving for the most part, unless we're fortunate enough to play into December, uh, which is a goal. Um, and then you know he he generally will give most of December off because by the time you're done, you're in a Thanksgiving and then you're in the finals, right? So you'll have an off season winter program that you'll kind of do on your own. And then coming back in, in mid-January, uh, you know, he'll start up again in the, in the weight room and those type of things, um, you know, mid-January, first week of February. And then he'll, uh, he usually does his uh, non-traditional four or five weeks are in uh, late March, early, or late March through April. So kind of right after spring break, um, he'll usually start right there. So, and that's the same for the women as well. What else? All right. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. And, and Diana, thank you so much for having me and, and for asking me to be a part of this. I love talking sports. I love talking athletics. I love talking Illinois Tech. So this was... Yeah awesome, awesome, awesome opportunity for me. And, and I really appreciate your, your willingness to do this. Yeah, thank you so much, Ed, for presenting and answering all of our questions. Um, I think this was very successful. Uh, and thank you everyone for joining us on this webinar tonight. I know it's a little late. Um, so go enjoy your dinner um, or go enjoy your, the rest of your night uh, and hope everyone has a great rest of your day.